Good evening. I'm Jake Schrantz, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Former Husker running back Rex Burkhead announced this afternoon that he is retiring from the NFL. The 10-year NFL veteran was drafted in the sixth round by the Cincinnati Bengals. Burkhead finished his career with over 3,400 total yards and 26 touchdowns during his professional stint. The Nebraska men's track and field team was ranked eighth in the third week of U.S. TFCCCA rankings. They posted five marks in the top ten nationally while adding four all-time marks this season. They are the top-ranked Big Ten team and have six event squads ranked in the top ten nationally, including weight throw and triple jump at number two, high jump at number six, 60-meter hurdles, and long jump at number seven, and shot put at number nine. The Nebraska Red-White Spring Game tickets will go on sale tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, and the public on sale will open at 10 a.m. Central Time on Wednesday, February 7th. This will be the first chance for Nebraska fans to get a look at the 2024 Huskers football team before the fall season gets underway. Reserve tickets for the spring game will be $15 with any available club tickets on sale for $25. For more information, visit Huskers.com. And lastly, a couple Big Ten women's basketball games to keep an eye on tonight as the 16-5 Michigan State Spartans lead the Minnesota Golden Gophers big in the second half. And later tonight, Purdue hosts Illinois starting at 7 p.m. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now we've got hour one of Husker Sports Nightly right now on the Huskers radio network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Goes off the bounce, goes behind your back, works foul line, pots for three, top of the key, you betcha! Natalie Potts, the Big Ten Freshman of the Week with a triple. Getting a hand on it with Jawan Gary, Wilcher scoops it up, now to Williams across the timeline, Williams to the trailing, Wilcher fumbled it, got it back, drives to the baseline, 15-footer up, got it, got it, got it, got it! We got a tie ball game! Eight on the shot clock, Gary and White, right wing, needs help, high lob underneath, Markowski. Gets a double team, kicks to the deep left corner. Moriarty with two, with one, her three pointer. It's back rim, it goes in. You betcha. Kendall Moriarty with a triple. Huge shot. The pump fake by Mass. Step back three on the way. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Holy smokes. Holy cow. The Flying Dutchman with a big three to tie it at 65. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. And here we are, a new week. That's okay, right? Wipe the slate for the weekend and move on to a new week. We're glad you're with us here on a Monday night. We've got a lot of fun things to get to. The head basketball coach is going to stop by for just a few minutes. Tough prep week. They got back last night. They leave tomorrow for Northwestern. So instead of a full hour, we're just going to have a few minutes with the head coach here in a little bit. Let's start there, Jessica. What an effort last night. And I think that's kind of what Husker fans were hoping to see from this team Yes, it, we would have loved to it have been a win, but be competitive in a road game against a good team, and they certainly were every bit that. I mean, Illinois is a top 10 or top 15 team in the nation. They're top 12 in the net. Or, yeah, I think 12 in the net and 14 in the in the top 25, and that's a tough place to play. And yeah, I think you walk away and you, you don't do. Don't do moral victories at this point with this team because they've got higher expectations. But with as hard as those road wins have come, I think you feel better about the performance and the effort overall with what they did at Illinois than maybe some of the other road games. And I even uh, I think we'll ask Coach Hoiberg about that and just kind of see. I mean, again, no no moral victories, but you do feel better, I think, about maybe getting Casey going. Uh, Rink played really well. And just, again, some of the get, coming back from down 10 with, with – Close to three left in the game. So I think there's a lot of positives they can build on, certainly, um, despite the loss. That, to me, was amazing. That This team has the ability to stretch games out. You think back to the, to the game with um, Wisconsin. We were down six, I think, with four minutes to go. Got back, got it to overtime, win it. Down ten with three and a half to go yesterday on the road. Take the lead late. And then, obviously, a, a bit of a controversial call. It was a tough call on C.J., uh, that certainly could have, the referee certainly could have swallowed the whistle there and not called that. I, I maintain it, if that was a Husker on the drive, you would want that call. I, I don't know. I mean, late in games, those are tough. I and mean, you've got family members who are officials. Those are tough ones to make. 
but he missed a free throw allowed to go to overtime. So he had five more minutes to, to do it. He just couldn't make enough plays late. But I love Kaysay coming back, being Kaysay what we expected has been three or four games since he's had even a double-digit scoring. But he has 31. He was terrific in the game last night. And it picked up because C.J. was off a little bit. So Kaysay picked up the slack right there. And I think with what... Uh, Casey was able to do it open things up for rink just because again how well they play off of each other and then with the help off the screens and and rink certainly does a good job but yeah it you you said it you hit the nail on the head had the call been against Nebraska you would like the call yes because you you could argue that he did get some arm but then I guess maybe the argument there is that was it the same kind of arm that was that they got on rink you know at the yeah. end I don't know I mean that's where but Either, either here nor there, you know, you, you can't put yourself in that position to, to have that foul call. And, um, but, yeah, I thought Casey was, was really good. And that just goes to show you how dangerous this team is. When, when one guy is off, it's okay because they've got three other ones that can pick up the slack. That's why I was on a champagne station Saturday morning. They had me on to preview the game. And I said, well, Nebraska's hard to guard because yeah. you don't know what – Who's going to be on what night? It might be CJ. It could be Casey. It could be Rink. could be Juwan. It could be Bryce. Bryce was not on. He was 3 of 12. And CJ was not on. He was 1 of 6. So those two combined, and they've been great, 4 of 18. And yet Nebraska's right there with a chance to win. That's because Rink was so good and Casey was so good. I, I, I think I take a lot of positives away from that. That kind of effort, to me, will win some road games before the season ends. Absolutely. And to me, now that you've seen, you know, if you're in that locker room, and we've now come back from what seemed to be insurmountable deficits in back-to-back -back games. Right. Now you go into every game, no matter what it might be, hey, we can come back from this. I think they've proven that they can come back, they can fight back and give themselves a chance to win. And, uh, you know, I, I just credit to this team and how well they play together, too, because how many nights is it somebody different that has the hot hand and then, but you can tell that they are looking to find those guys. I, I noticed that last night, you know, because I thought, after that game against Wisconsin, when, when Coach Hoiberg said they were looking for CJ because they knew how he had the hot hand, they were doing that with Casey last night. And that just, this team is so unselfish. They really are, and they want to find whoever, because there can be somebody different every night. And whoever's got to go and let's get them the ball, let's do whatever we can to get them the ball. But, you know, I know that the Big Ten Network crew, um, you know, really made a big deal about maybe that's where, you know, at the end of the game, it hurt Nebraska to not have a point guard. And, you know, I, I still think maybe in some of these games you're, you're seeing that still, that maybe that is the one weakness for this team in, in some of these games is that they don't have a true ball handler in, in some of these certain situations. It's very fair, and I think we all know it. I think Fred knows it. I know the staff knows it. They do their best they can. That's why I think they, li they like the ball in Bryce's hands yeah, a lot. Or rink, yeah. Or rink, because then, then you've got a post trying to guard rink. Well, they're not going to come steal the ball away from you. So, heck of a game. Yes, it was it was tough. Now you hope this team can shed it quickly because it's now you're going to go play a good Northwestern team who got beaten overtime on Saturday. They've lost two in a row. That's going to be another tough one on Wednesday night. But I think this team, I think this team has shown some nice bounce back right now. Yeah, they have. They, Coach Hoiberg said that a lot. That it seems like this team has responds better consistently coming off losses than they have wins. And so now you've got to respond off of a win, and you know, which now they're coming off a loss, but you've got to figure out ways to, to build those, string those wins together. What is a little bit concerning for me is that you're going to Northwestern after Nebraska beat them here, and you know, know. They're, they're going to be a little bit fired Revenge. up to play. Yeah. And uh, certainly Bowie didn't have his best game here. Nebraska did a pretty good job defensively, so they might want to write that wrong, and it was just so, so quick ago. But on the flip side of that, Nebraska had the winning recipe. You know, they, they were able to get it done here. Now they just got to go take that effort there on the road. Here's how goofy the metrics are. We, you hear us talk about the net, which is replaced in least basketball, the RPI, which the committee uses as a bit of a guide, a road map to put together the tournament teams. Even though Nebraska lost last night, they went up in the net because they played a really good team, a top 15 team, as Jessica mentioned, to an overtime game. And so it helped Nebraska's net. So it's a, lot of the, a lot of the metrics liked what they saw from Nebraska, even though it was a loss. It's just amazing how that works sometimes. Yeah, and, and again, another crew last night that we're talking about, Nebraska being, hey, the eye test, you know, which you and I have talked about, which that unfortunately I don't know how much 
the committee relies on that, but they certainly have passed the eye test. And again, that was another good eye test because sure Illinois is going to be what a top five seed, probably, don't you think? I would think, yeah. You know, so um, as long as they keep taking care of business and and they got to like what they saw against Nebraska against a team like that. So, you know, just just keep taking care of business, you know, and and that's you you take you protect the home court and you know try to still still one of these. I mean, now what we're down to what four four road games? Four road, four home. So I think if you know if they could get two, I think that mm -hmm. puts them in a really good spot. I'm calling on my shot. Twenty two total wins in the regular season. Wow. Right, Cole? Isn't that what we did today? What did you say at the beginning of the season? I don't remember. Yeah, I don't I don't even know if I we think did. I might have had nineteen. Yeah. Twenty, somewhere in there. I was pretty I, you and I have been on the same page. We were pretty encouraged to this team back in October. You could see there were good parts to this team. And we liked the way the schedule set up early, and Nebraska took advantage of that. They went 11 and one in the non-conference, or 10 and one in the non-conference, and gave themselves a shot. So I've got us winning of the last eight. I've got us winning six. Yeah. Look that's at me, the good. sunshine pumper, right that, here. I think huh? that, that's a pretty, pretty good call. And this team is deserving. That's not even being a homer. No. I think there's a lot. If you would ask a lot of college basketball analysts or experts that that follow basketball across the country, they'd probably have that around that same number five or six as well. Yeah. Be just because of the way they've been playing. I think it's a tournament team, and I know everybody's nervous because we're Nebraska and we followed this program for most of our lives, and we've been disappointed so often. But shake that off. It's okay to wrap your arms up and say that we got a good basketball team because they are, and they, they proved that again last night. All right, uh, the other side of that coin, tough one at PBA on Saturday for the Husker women. They lose to a Rutgers team that only had eight healthy players. They were 0-10 in the league, and they beat the Huskers. And I just as I watched that game Saturday, something was just off. I just, something, I, I don't, sometimes it just seems like they're, they're kind of going through the motions a little bit out there, and Boy, you just can't afford to do that. Even though Rutgers hadn't won, it's still a Big Ten team. You've got to be kind of ready to go, and that, that was a, a painful lesson. Now, they certainly have a lot of time to recover from that. I think the metrics still like Nebraska's team as an NCAA tournament team, but you can't do that very often or you're going to fall out of that batch. Yeah, and, and I think um, I didn't hear the, the post game with Coatney and, and Coach Williams, but, you know, Rutgers – did have a really good night shooting. But that being said, 60%. I don't know if at times if Nebraska was tough enough on the defensive end. And that that's where Coach Williams challenges. They take a lot of pride on that. And so, yes, they had a lot of ones that go in that maybe typically don't go in. You know, they don't yeah. have a lot of these players that, that shoot it like that. But that being said, you got to make things more challenging and you got to lock down. You got to get stops in those those critical moments. And Again, they just they got themselves in a couple of holes, and, and this is what this team does, and then they fight back out of it. But you can't let yourself get down in, in those situations and, and try to keep clawing back out. But when this team is making threes at a high, late, high rate, they are a very, very, very tough team to beat. And when, the, when, the, when they are not, that's when we've seen some, some slip-ups in some of their games. Jazz goes one of eight. From behind the line, Logan Nisley goes two of seven. Those are two good shooters, and they go a combined three of 15. That's tough to do. And then, you, as you mentioned, how well Rutgers shot it. They were 28 of 47, 59.6%. That's phenomenal. Credit Rutgers, good for them. That's great. But, boy, that's just that's a loss that stings. That's one of those blemishes on your resume that you're like, oh, boy. That's not going to look good to the committee when they sit in a room in a couple of weeks. But still a lot of basketball to go and still a lot of good teams to go. It continues for them tomorrow night. I think the bigger concern, Darian White hobbled off the court at the end of the game uh, on Saturday. Uh, looked like a knee. Maybe she kind of jolted the knee. I don't think she tore anything, but that, could, that could, could be something to keep an eye on for tomorrow night's game. And Michigan, going back to your point about the men playing Northwestern, yeah. the Huskers put it to them here a couple weeks ago. Michigan had a good win over the weekend. They're going to want to get a little revenge. Yeah, because Nebraska dominated them. Really, they had control from start to finish. But, you know, I go back to something that Alexis Markowski told me a couple weeks ago when I talked to her is, you know, we can't just get up for the big games like Iowa and – Michigan and, and all those games, we, we have to be up. We have to be consistently up and ready to play for all these games. But you know, here's a big opportunity: sweep Michigan because that's a that's a team that you, when you talk about a team that when you are talking with the committee, a name that people recognize and that has been in the tournament and carries some cloud and carries some weight. If you can sweep a team like Michigan, that's a that's a big. That maybe kind of cancels out a little bit on the resume. That that would be a big right. resume booster to have two wins over Michigan, one at home, one on the road. So it, 
fortunately, the net, again, going back to that, did even though they lost to Rutgers, who's got a net in the 150 range, it only dropped Nebraska to 33rd. So they're still in good shape there. And all those big games coming up, including Iowa at home on next Sunday, which is sold out. They still go to Ohio State to play the Buckeyes. So they still have some opportunities to pick up some big wins that could really help inflate the resume. So uh, first things first, Michigan tomorrow night in Ann Arbor. And yes, and this team will be one game at a time, but a big one on Sunday with Caitlin Clark. And Caitlin could be chasing could. a pretty big record. What is she, 60? She's 66 points away from breaking the NCAA all time leading scoring record. Now, according to some, it's a tainted record. It'll be a tainted record, Jessica. <laughs> Oh. Was it Cheryl Swoops? And I was such a huge fan of Cheryl Swoops, but I, she just made a comment about saying that the record shouldn't count because it was her COVID year, and that could not be further from the truth because this is her fourth. Caitlin's fourth year. Yeah. I was telling you that when Kelsey Plum broke it the first time, I was actually with Oklahoma. It was in the NCAA tournament. And so Kelsey Plum, it took all every bit of her four-year career and then into the, the second game of the NCAA tournament for her to break that record. And Caitlin still got lots of time. In fact, you and I were talking, she very well could be chasing the all-time yeah. Pete Maravich's record um, here pretty soon. So depending on if she keeps scoring like she does. But, hey, let's just uh, let's have a great defensive performance and not let her have it on the floor inside Pinocchio yeah, Bank I Arena. I don't want that to happen. I mean, I, God bless her. That's amazing that she's going to set that at some point in time. Let's not have it happen here. No. Let's keep that away. All right, here's what we have on a program that I just got earlier today. Caught up with Fred Hoiberg. We'll hear his thoughts about last night's game and getting ready for Northwestern. And then eventually Michigan comes here over the weekend. That's coming up here in a few minutes. Hour number two, we're going to hear from Donovan Jones. Donovan signed with the Huskers back in the December signing period. This is another signing period week for Husker football. Everybody kind of forgets that there is a second signing day. It's coming up Wednesday. Nebraska's looking to sign five to seven more players. Some of them may be preferred walk-ons, but five to seven more Huskers are going to be added to the roster on a Wednesday. Uh, we're going to hear from Donovan Jones, though, who is already a Cornhusker young man from Omaha North High School. We'll hear that conversation in hour number two. And we want to hear from you as well. Phone lines, text lines are open, 402-413-2400. If you have some thoughts about any of that, we certainly uh, would love to get your take on that here tonight. Well, folks, if problem gambling is burning up your money, there is a way out. Help is free and confidential for Nebraskans and their families. There's no judgment, just Help. Visit lifeafterbet.com. We're back to hear from Fred Hoiberg. We'll do that next. Start your next journey with Woodhouse. Our commitment extends beyond just selling cars. We offer an unparalleled car buying experience that allows you to shop and buy all online. Explore an array of new brands, makes, and models, as well as our large selection of pre-owned vehicles. And it's easy to get started today with our streamlined purchasing process online, granting you the freedom to secure your next vehicle anytime, anywhere. Discover a better way to buy with Woodhouse. Let's face it, nothing makes you look older than you really are than thinning hair. But what if you could not only increase your hair count, but promote new hair growth without surgery, without drugs with potential side effects, and without a prescription from your doctor? Well, now you can, thanks to a breakthrough new supplement called Hair Grow. Provided by New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Europe, Hair Grow is now available in the U.S. Only Hair Grow contains Tokogaya a powerful antioxidant that has received a U.S. patent. Multiple clinical studies show hair grow is safe and effective in promoting new hair growth. In one study, 95% of the patients using hair grow saw increased hair count. Don't lose more time and more hair. Try hair grow today to feel and look your best. Just go to newnordicusa.com or visit Walgreens or Amazon to purchase. Look younger and feel more confident with hair grow by New Nordic at newnordicusa.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. 
It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Woodhouse has got you covered for your next car, truck, or SUV. We are committed to making the car buying and owning experience better thanks to our knowledgeable sales staff and factory certified technicians. You can discover our large inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles anytime at Woodhouse.com, where we have made buying a car easier than ever. Whether you need a family hauling SUV, a car to take you around town, or a hardworking truck, Woodhouse has something for everyone. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. As we welcome you back to Sports Nightly, I'm Jessica Cooney, and joined in studio by, the, studio by the head coach of Nebraska men's basketball, Fred Hoiberg. Well, coach, a tough one last night, uh, but got to love the fight out of your guys up there at Illinois. You know what, Jessica, we, we really competed. There's no doubt about that. I thought our guys played exceptionally hard for 45 minutes. And, you know, we had two, I thought, really disappointing stretches. The beginning uh, four or five minutes of the second half, uh, they really dominated us in the paint in that stretch. And we were on the other end shooting jump shots. And that's where they got up to where they extended, I think, to about a 10-point lead. <clears throat> Once we got back, uh, you know, to be in what we did in the first half where we did build a little bit of a lead, had a lead at halftime, and got ourselves reestablished, and then uh, they took control of the glass, uh, you know, with about the f seven, six, seven minute mark, and then they push it up to 10. The thing I was really pleased with our guys and proud of them is how they kept fighting. And it was a pretty similar situation to last year. We had a very close game with Illinois on their court, and it was about the same margin at the under four media timeout, and it went from 10 to 20. Uh, last night, it went from 10, we took a lead and scored 11 straight. And then, unfortunately, they called a foul on that last possession on CJ to tie it. And then, you know, I thought we had another call in overtime where Rink got the ball at the top of the key in a one-possession game. And, uh, unfortunately, they, uh, uh, Shannon got the steal and, and pretty much ran out the clock. But, you know, that's the kind of resolve we need. It's the kind of fight that we need from start to finish to give ourselves a chance. <clears throat> I thought we did a great job taking care of the basketball last night against a good pressure defensive team. Uh, but we really got to do, you know, from start to finish, we got to be much better on the glass. You're down by 10 with three minutes to go. What did you like about that stretch that allowed you guys to force the overtime? Well, we got stops, and that, that was the biggest thing is we strung together some stops. We have a, a stat that we keep called a kill. If you get three consecutive stops, we had six of those last night, uh, including in that very important stretch where we, where we climbed back into the game and, and took that lead. And, you know, again, the guys, I thought, executed very well. We found Casey. We got uh, Casey some good looks. Rank, I thought, uh, missed some easy ones. That was the other thing. When you look at our stats after the game, we were 13 of 31 at the rim, Jessica, mm -hmm. 13 of 31. 
you find a way to make a couple of those, it doesn't go to overtime. But, uh, you know, Rink finished some shots in there, hit a couple threes. Kese hit some shots, and, and that's, uh, that's what built that lead. Good patience by Rink on that last possession on an out-of-bounds play where Kese came off to the corner. Uh, you know, we've talked a lot about that. Sometimes Kese just raises up and shoots it regardless of the situation. Good job you know, to rink at the elbow and good patience taken at the basket to get that, uh, to get that last possession in overtime, or, sorry, in regulation to give us that one-point lead. You know, I know you guys want to get the win on the road, but do you feel a little bit better walking away about maybe some of the things you saw on the road in this performance as opposed to maybe some of the other road performances? Well, I, as I told him after the game, I said the thing that this should show everybody in this locker room is now we know we can do it. We mm -hmm. can beat anybody, anywhere. Uh, Illinois was a 12th ranked team in the net, I think 14th in, in, the, in the rankings. And we showed if we go out there and do the necessary things that we're going to have a chance to win. And as we've talked about, I think I talked last week on the show, you know, our formula is taking care of the basketball and rebounding. If we do both, we win. If we do one, we're in a close game. And if we do neither, we're going to get our butt kicked. Last night, we took care of one. We, we took care. We had under 10 turnovers, uh, but 17 offensive rebounds, Jessica. That's mm -hmm. just too many. And you got to find a way to have that toughness, that physicality, that mental resolve all the way through. We just didn't have enough of those plays to come out on top. I know everybody else outside of this locker room was really worried about what, what was going on with Casey, but it was good to get him going, I'm sure, for this team. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the announcers were talking to me before the game last night saying, what's going on with Casey? I said, Casey's fine. Yeah. He, he's going to be fine. He's too good a shooter. He'll get it going. And it was good to see him knock down that first uh, corner three on our very first offensive possession. Normally when he does that, that's what gets him going. And uh, he just you know, had it going all the way through. Um, you know, I love how our guys find him. When Casey gets it going, I thought we did a really good job having a conscious effort of knowing where he was at all times and uh, in knocking down those shots. But it's fun to see, you know, Casey, I mean, he took the one, I think he was two steps over half court uh, early in the game. But, you know, you live with some of those because he's shown uh, that he can knock those down. You know, not just Casey, but I've talked to a few of your guys or several of your guys throughout the course since I've been here, and a lot of them go back to how you instill that confidence that even when things are not always going right, that they still feel confident in taking those shots. I mean, think about some of the big buckets that Rink has hit when his night wasn't always, um, you know, smooth sailing from start to finish. But how important has that been for you as a coach to make sure that those guys are confident when they shoot the ball, no matter what's going on the game before or, or leading up to that game? Yeah, it, it is important. You have to have that mentality, especially as a shooter. And I played with some of the all-time greats that had no conscience. And I wish I had that. I didn't. But I wish I would have had more of that. So, you know, you do talk to your guys all the time. And they put in all the work. They put in all the preparation for those moments. And when you have an open shot, you got to be ready. You got to raise up. You got to knock those down uh, when the defense g gives those and, and those opportunities present themselves. And our guys, for the most part, uh, you know, have shot the ball well this year. And we're going to have to keep that going here these last eight games. How about Juwan Gary coming off the injury and the minutes that he's been able to provide you guys and, and really just his impact that he makes on the defensive end? Yeah, he just he's such a key for our team. He does so many little things. we got to get him back on the offensive glass. That is one area where he's got to get us extra possessions. He got a couple for us uh, last night, but he just does so many things. Defensively, he can guard one through five. Uh, we were in a, in a switch situation uh, a lot last night. And he's, uh, he's a warrior out there. I just you know, love having him out there. It's great to have him back on the floor. So we haven't had you on um, since the Wisconsin win either, but to, to win that one in overtime and to overcome the deficit, um, with the way that this team can score, do you ever doubt any kind of deficit that, that you guys get into? Well, I'm glad I didn't know that there was like 1,400 consecutive games where teams <laughs> in the top, uh, uh, whatever it is, top 10 um, have had 15-point leads at halftime. So I'm glad I didn't know that stat. But you know what? Our guys, if they keep fighting and they keep going out there and clawing, I thought they made some really good plays. Uh, they were dirty. They were grimy. And uh, found a way to get, to get a, that, that was a huge win for our program. We had to get that win. We knew the stretch we're in right now with at Maryland, home against Wisconsin, at Illinois, at Northwestern is an incredibly difficult stretch. Um, you know, getting one of those early was important. And now we've got to find a way to go out and play a good game on Wednesday against a very talented Northwestern team. I've had a couple of people since then tell me that that's one of the loudest they've heard uh, a men's basketball game, even going back to the Devaney days. Uh, how, how rocking was that crowd? How much did they feel you guys? It's the loudest I've ever heard it. Wow. It, it was, <clears throat> excuse me, Jessica, it was unbelievable to see our crowd will us. And, and it even forced Illinois, or sorry, Wisconsin, I thought, into a couple very uncharacteristic turnovers where they just threw the ball down the floor when it was so loud in there you couldn't hear yourself think. And, you know, we've lost one game at home this year. We've lost no... Big Ten games, and a lot of that has to do with our crowd. They've just been 
unbelievable. The support, even when the students weren't there, I thought it was incredibly loud. But that atmosphere the other night was awesome. I've had a lot of people say it was the most fun they've ever had um, in that building. And, you know, to be able to share that experience with the fans. I love that they, they come on the floor. I thought security did a great job of helping Wisconsin get off the floor safely. Uh, but to be able to share that moment with the fans that played such a huge role in that win was incredible. And that was uh, C.J. Wilcher's night. You talked about how the guys were finding Casey. On that night, they were finding C.J. How do you go about getting a guy, guys to feel when they know, hey, we got to get this guy the ball. He's got the hot hand. Well, yeah, with C.J. that night, it was rink a couple games before when he had 34 against Ohio State. So that's what our guys have done. And that's the other thing people said, well, are you worried about Casey? No, we've got other guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it wasn't Casey's night. C.J. had it rolling. A couple games before that, it wasn't Casey's night. Rink had it rolling. And that's the beauty, I think, of this team. It's not always going to be the same guy. You know, Josiah led us in scoring the last time we played Northwestern. Uh, Jawan has led us in scoring this year. Sam, you know, going all the way back to the first game of the season, led us in scoring. So we've got a lot of guys that are capable of going out there, and that's the beauty of this team is the balance that we've shown. Bryce, you know, is another guy that, uh, that's had a big year. So, you know, even if one guy doesn't have it going, somebody else gets it, I think our guys have done a nice job of finding them. Well, you said it, it seems like you've played a, a hundred games here in the last couple of weeks, but um, you know this is a tough stretch. You go to Northwestern. How how are you keeping guys fresh? And you played a couple overtime games, a couple of hard fought games. Are you worried at all about fatigue at this point? Well, yeah, I am. It, it, it is a balancing act at this time of year. We haven't had a bye week yet. I think everybody's had one except for us, and we have our two at the end of the year, which isn't ideal either. It'd be nice to spread those out a little bit, but it is what it is. I, listen, I think everybody complains about their schedule, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest with you, but you know, we've had short prep. I think only one time we've had more time to prepare than our opponent. And this is another example of that with Northwestern having an extra day. And then after this one, we get Michigan on a short prep. And this is a late game, eight o'clock game. We're gonna get home late. And then you have an uh, afternoon game. Uh, on Saturday against Michigan to end this very tough stretch. And then we get a week. Then we get our first of the two bye uh, weeks. But, you know, we just got to find a way. You got to dig in deep. You can't worry about it. We're playing for something right now, which is awesome. And we got to uh, find a way to get into your reserve tank because we do have some guys banged up. I mean, you talked about Jawan's injury, Rink with his knee procedure, Josiah still having trouble with his ankle. So, you know, it is a balancing act. We had the three really tough practices heading into the Ohio State game, and I thought that helped us. Um, you know, we've been a little bit shorter now that we have these two-day preps uh, with one kind of mental uh, longer film session day and walkthrough, which we did this morning, and then tomorrow we, we're going to get up and down a little bit. That's just always how I've done it at whatever level I've been. If you have a lighter day without getting up and down, that next day you have to get them uh, moving. Uh, you know, going into that 8 o'clock game. So, you know, it's opportunity tomorrow to get back uh, going again and, um, you know, hopefully prepare again for a team that's playing ex exceptionally well, especially at home. Yeah, and you guys uh, got Northwestern uh, last time I saw them January 20th. Didn't seem like it was that long ago, but you, you did get the victory. What did your guys do during that win that maybe you want to carry over and, and, and this time around again? Well, we, we control the glass, mm -hmm. and I think we out-rebounded them by 14 in that game. And... Uh, we had too many turnovers. We were double-digit turnovers that game, uh, but we did such a good job on the glass, and I thought our defensive effort was really good, especially on Bowie. Uh, knowing that after, I think it was two for 15 in that game, he's going to come out and be extremely aggressive. So we're going to have to do a good job with him early, hopefully not get his confidence going, and then run their shooters off. They shoot the ball at uh, one of the best clips in the nation. All right, Coach. Well, best of luck. Appreciate your time. All right. Thanks, Jessica. Again, that is Fred Hoiberg joining us here on Sports Nightly. Nebraska on the road at Northwestern, 8 o'clock tip, and we will have the call for you right here on the Huskers Radio Network starting at 7 o'clock. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Hey, Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent Equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska.
That's the best way I could describe how it felt for me when I would walk out of either the casino or the kino parlor, is that you just felt that wave of heat, that wave of oppression kind of hit you, that wave of dread. Mike is a former problem gambler. Right away, you would always know that that drive home would be the worst moments of why. Why did I do this again? Why can't I stop this? Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at Life After Bet. Com. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ, Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Hey, Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Not All Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Not All Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Not All Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture, and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie, back with you on a Monday night. Thanks to the coach for making a little bit of time. Quick turnaround. They got back about 11 o'clock last night. They'll leave tomorrow midday for Evanston Crypto in the chat room. Wanted to know, did they, why didn't they just stay back there? They did think about that. But I think they felt like they could get home in decent time Sunday night, get everybody in their own beds, have the practice today in their own facility, tomorrow in their own facility, not have the kids miss a day of school today, and then get there. I think that was probably the right decision. It was only it's only about an hour flight to Champagne, so I think they made the right move. Yeah, I don't I don't think it was 
you know, again, like you said, you get to sleep in your own bed, and it's almost more exhausting, and you get less of rest when you do that, and you have to travel, and you're not, and then finding where you're going to shoot and practice and recovery is such a big part of it. And could, could you find a cold tub you know, anywhere? Like I mean, all yeah. the things, a lot of times if you're on the road and looking for places to practice, it's like a high school gym right. or, you know, so they don't, might not have all the amenities that they're used to here in terms of recovery. That's what, you know, John Cook has talked about this for volleyball because, you know, volleyball will play a Friday night in one community and then, then travel and play the next night somewhere else. And he's like, somebody needs to get into a hot tub or a cold tub. He goes, it's almost impossible for us to get that done if we do that. So I think for, for this case, having the two days between two nights here, their own training facility here, I think that's why they opted to come back. But they did, Crypto, they did talk about doing that. So that's a very astute on your part. How about what, what Coach said about, you know, the, the fact that they're the only team that has had to have – They've had less day to prepare than their opponent. For like six straight games. Yeah. And Northwestern, here's another one. I mean, and, and that's what he said. He's like, you know, everyone has an issue with their schedule, but they've, they've kind of had a little bit of a tough go at it. Not just how long they've had to wait for the bye week, and then the fact that they have the bye week at the end of the season when you don't right. really want the bye week. And they have two bye weeks after. So they play Michigan Saturday, and then they don't play till the next Saturday. It's Penn State, who's playing pretty well, by the way. So there's seven days. And then the very last week of the regular season, they go Sunday to Sunday. So those you would like those breaks, one of them in January. We're kind of going to the meat grinder right now. But that's, it is what it is. And, yeah, just to, you think about two, not, not only just the schedule how it is, but now they've played two overtime wins. Right. One just off the road. So... A guy like Juwan Gary, who had missed time anyways, who we had been told that, hey, his minutes are going to be limited, but now here he is coming back off the injury, and he's having to play probably a lot more minutes than they expected. Rink Mass still isn't fully healthy and, you know, coming off the knee procedure, and, you know, they're, they're a little banged up, but so on, on top of all that, then, oh, by the way, here's two overtime games where you have to exude a lot of energy to try to come back. They were down and, and fought back to come back, so, yeah, not ideal, but... Hey, you just gotta gotta dig deep and um, you know just lay it all out there and know that maybe there's a there is a break coming up next week. Another question on the text line, Greg Jessica, does Fred keep an eye out for talents like Rink during the season at schools like those in the Missouri Valley or other non-power five league? He then goes on to talk about a guy who's really good at Indiana State, also a couple players at Drake. You know they watch a lot of college basketball. But they can't make contact. That's tampering. You can't now, the minute those kids jump in late March and say I'm entering the portal or whenever it happens, because this staff watches a lot of college basketball, they are quick to jump. They, Fred told the story to me the other day. He said when, when Rink announced he was in the portal, he said the next day, he said we were on a plane going to Peoria to go talk to him because we knew he would fit what we want to do here. Yeah. And now I'm sure for some of these kids, maybe they have it in their mind, hey, I'm going to transfer, and probably they have already in their mind some of the top schools. Now, you don't know what NIL opportunities are going to be there, but a lot of times these guys, the high-level guys, are thinking like Rink, for example. I remember sitting down with him, and he has aspirations of playing at the next level, and he knew that Coach Hoiberg could help him get there. So for some of these guys, it might be like a Rink thinking, okay, Where's a good fit for my game? And the reason why Rink thought that is because he saw what, what Derek Walker did with this Nebraska team. So he, some of these guys are pretty strategic with what they might be looking for, when, but some of them might not even have a clue that they might be going to the portal yet. Right. Some of them might stay, you know? They could stay, right. So, but no, yeah, great question about that, but we're not Iowa. We don't tamper with players in the middle of the season. <laughs> so um, They do watch Juco. I mean, they'll go oh, recruit sure. Juco and stuff. That, you know, some of those game. transfer guys. But the as far as the NCAA, yeah, they might keep their eyes out. They they are w constantly watching basketball. They might see something, but I, they won't go and recruit anybody no. until they they know what's what's officially in the portal. Got to got to play by the rules. Um, oh, where was I going to go? I had, I had some I had a thought coming off of that question about that. But you know, they do have guys in the office that, that watch that transfer portal because there's an actual website that you have to go submit your name to to come on. And so football does the same thing. You sit there and you have all the sports in Nebraska do the same thing. You sit there and you have people who that's their job uh, whenever the season ends to watch that thing and see and go to Coach uh, Cook or Coach Williams or Coach Weber or whatever and say, 
this person's in. I think they might be a fit for us. And then you do the, the due diligence. It's made their job in a lot of ways a little harder because a lot of times you get the season over with and you kind of have your recruiting class signed in November. You're ready to go play golf or whatever. Now you got to go kind of do it again and get in the portal. It's really busy. Well, and then you're recruiting your guys to and stay. And try to keep. You know, you're, you're trying to make sure that you're maintaining those relationships to keep your guys that are here. But, yeah, it's, um, you know, and then you think about, you have this big signing day in December, and you think, okay, we can breathe a little bit. But now, look, we're bringing in some more guys coming up. Right. What, two days from now? How many times have we been hearing that concourse thumping you know, the last two months? It, it is. It's, it's constant. And even, you know, I guess there are some guys that even though they, the portal is closed, like you can't enter the portal, there are some guys that are still in the portal, right, that, you can, are. that you're going after. There's so. a lot of kids that haven't landed anywhere. Yeah. So, And then the portal will open again for football in April for a couple of weeks as well. It's a dead period now for college football. That means the coaches cannot go actively recruit. So the Ed Foley tour of Nebraska is over for a while. He can't go visit all those high schools. And, but I think the coaches love this time of year because now they're back in the building and they're back with this team and they get to know their guys really well. So there is going to be a Matt Rural sighting on Wednesday. He's going to have a press conference. He has not been in front of the press I think since December 20th, the signing period then. I think I don't think he's had a press conference since unless I unless he had one mm. when I was in Hong Kong. No, no. I mean, it's look, a long time. I don't, and I can't remember what other media appearances he's done since. He's been then. on the Pat McAfee show but, and some not, of that. Not many, so no. since then. So. so there's a lot to cover. But yeah, you, you mentioned the guys are all here. You know, the softball had a, a fan day event over the weekend, and the guys had some workouts, and so I walked through there to go down, and, and they Saw were hanging out, talking with Kristen Coggin, the, the nutritionist. Uh, so, yeah, they're, they're in full swing and um, saw a lot of them walking in and out, and they're uh, getting after it already. I think it's Matt Week. Oh, Matt I, Drills? I think that started today. Wow. That, I know. I remember thinking, <laughs> remember learning about that last year. It's a, it's a tough time. Yep. Yeah. Hey, folks, you could be a winner of a 2024 Porsche making from Porsche of Omaha this season. If you can make a full court putt at halftime of a men's basketball game, if you want some information or how to get yourself registered to be a contestant, go to huskers.com slash putt. We're back with more Sports Highlight next. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. I just remember leaving that day feeling absolutely exhausted. I was sick and tired of living that double life. Mike is a former problem gambler. The anxiety, the depression is real. You start thinking about the money, the, where that could have went to. It's never enough. I could win $10 million today and I'd go back and try to win 20 tomorrow. Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at lifeafterbet.com. Start your next journey with Woodhouse. Our commitment extends beyond just selling cars. We offer an unparalleled car buying experience that allows you to shop and buy all online. Explore an array of new brands, makes, and models, as well as our large selection of pre-owned vehicles. And it's easy to get started today with our streamlined purchasing process online, granting you the freedom to secure your next vehicle anytime, anywhere. Discover a better way to buy with Woodhouse. We're back inside the Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie, final few minutes of our 
number one here on a Monday Night of Sports. I want to congratulate Rex Burkhead, one of the most popular Husker players in my time here in Lincoln, announced today that he is retiring from the National Football League, 10-year career, uh, such a such a talented player, and again, such a popular Cornhusker. Congrats, Rex. Good for you. A terrific run in the league. Got a Super Bowl ring, I think, with the Patriots is where he got a Super Bowl ring, but um, just what a career. Ten years in the NFL, that's a long time for running backs. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah, what is it? It's like the lowest average, and it's like two and a half years or something like that, three years. To go years. ten is pretty incredible. Um, I remember, so before I got here, obviously, and um, just – Rex Burkhead fantasy team. I think I had an injury to the running back. He moved in there, and boy, he carried my fantasy team uh, one year. <laughs> so I'll never forget that about about Rex Burkhead. But he was a, a big part of my my fantasy league about I think like six seven years ago. Awesome young guy. And again, to this day, I think he's one of the more popular Huskers of, of all time, and even though he wasn't a Heisman or anything like that. So nice, so nice. nice. You know, when I interviewed him back in the fall, I mean, just so you would never know that he is. He had the career. That he, he's just so down to earth, so kind, and. Um, um, you know, very helpful, whatever you need. It, just a great human being, too. So you, you root for guys like that to have careers like that. Very instrumental in the success of Team Jack, which is the organization based here in Nebraska that raises money for uh, pediatric brain cancer. He's still very active in that. In fact, he even mentioned that in his kind of social post today, that he's thankful for all the people that have helped raise money for that cause so it's still something he brings up a lot so congrats rex a great career um the big dog will talk about rex a little bit yeah they're, they're buddies or pals i'm not talking to the big dog i hope he's all right well he can't be hunting he's doing his other no job. he's yeah this is his busiest time he's kind of off the grid a little bit but i need to reach out i to think him. he was in mobile last week for the senior bowl he's been all over he's been in hawaii and you know how a good senior bowl was omar brown did it really well he did, yes and Does that it surprise was you? from no, not at all. From start to finish, he was, because a lot of times they evaluate on the practices even more than they do the games, and he did really well during the practices as well. But, no, he's a guy, he came along, and he, he's very versatile. He competes hard, and um, you can talk about another very, very nice human being. Like, he's, he's great. So I think he's going to test well, too, at, at Pro Day. So uh, maybe something to keep an eye on, but... You know, I don't know where he stands, if maybe he can get on a team, but I think no doubt he'll be uh, a guy that will get a shot for to, sure. To your point, they put out at the end of the week before the game, they put out their all-practice team for the East and the West or however they break that down, and he made it. He made their all-practice team, so he opened some eyes with what he did there. So pulling for him. Q, I think, will test pretty well. Quentin Newsom, I think, when he gets a chance to test. I don't think it'll be a big draft for Nebraska. There's not a lot of guys that I think are – draft worthy but I think some guys will get a chance to go into camps and maybe make a team. Quentin will he go to the combine? I don't know that the combine invites guys check that would you if they're out yet I don't know if they've all come Surely out Surely he'd get an invite to the combine. I would think yeah. I mean you how many times have we hear he's one of the best corners in the Big Ten. Right. If you're one of the best corners in the Big Ten you should get an invite to the Gotta the be combine. one of the 300 that get to go to the combine <laughs> Three. right? In, I think it's 300. Yeah, well, and then there's, like, so many at each position. So yeah. if, if he's – he's got to be in the top 25, right, of corners. and I would think. So check that, guys. Cole, see if you can find if they, if they passed out uh, NFL Combine invite yet. I've not heard that Q has, has done that. But you're right. We're, we're, we kid Jeremiah, but he – Jeremiah is a sports agent, and so this is the time he's trying to acquire clients. He's got some clients, so he's kind of working them through the process of all this. So – uh, he, he's busy, but I'm, I miss sideline slice. I, I need it. I need it. I need a taste of that. Well, we have one. It's February, so we need to do one in the month of February. So we'll have to try to lock him down sometime. All right, we'll look forward to that, folks. What else? Auto Family. They are your trusted auto partner. Twenty brands, twenty convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at Woodhouse.com. More of the show coming up. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
Notto Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally.
Good evening. Jake Schrantz here with our sports ticker brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Former Husker running back Rex Burkhead announced this afternoon that he is retiring from the NFL. The 10 year NFL veteran was drafted in the sixth round by the Cincinnati Bengals and finished his career with over 3,400 total yards and 26 touchdowns during his professional stint. The Nebraska men's track and field team was ranked eighth in the third week of the U.S. TFCCCA rankings. They posted five marks in the top 10 nationally while adding four all time marks this season. They are the top ranked Big Ten team and have six event squads ranked in the top 10 nationally including weight throw and triple jump at number two, high jump at number six, 60 meter hurdles and long jump at number seven and shot put at number nine. The Nebraska red white spring game tickets will go on sale tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Central time, followed by the public on sale that will open at 10 a.m. Central time on Wednesday, February 7th. This will be the first chance for Nebraska fans to get a look at the 2024 Huskers football team before the fall season gets underway. Reserve tickets for the spring game will be $15, with any available club tickets on sale for $25. For more information, visit Huskers.com. And lastly, some Big Ten women's basketball games to keep an eye on tonight, as Michigan State took down the Minnesota Golden Gophers 76-65 to just a few minutes ago. Purdue is currently hosting Illinois right now inside Mackey Arena in West Lafayette, Indiana. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Up next, we've got hour two of Huskers Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Goes off the bounce, goes behind her back, works foul line, pots for three, top of the key, you betcha! Natalie Potts, the Big Ten Freshman of the Week with a triple. Getting a hand on it was Jawan Gary, Wilcher scoops it up, now to Williams across the timeline, Williams to the trailing, Wilcher fumbled it, got it back, drives to the baseline, 15-footer up, got it, got it, got it, got it! We got a tie ball game! Eight on the shot clock, Gary and White, right wing, needs help, high lob underneath, Markowski. Gets a double team, kicks to the deep left corner. Moriarty with two, with one. Her three pointer, it's back rim, it goes in. You betcha. Kendall Moriarty with a triple. Huge shot. The pump fake by Mass. Step back three on the way. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Holy smokes. Holy cow. The Flying Dutchman with a big three to tie it at 65. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. We're back, hour number two here on Sports On We're going to hear from one of the Huskers who signed their national letter of intent back in December, Omaha North product Donovan Jones, later in the hour. And Jessica, we're going to play a little bit that she put together at the first ever softball fan fest from Saturday. We'll have that for you this hour and our weekend winners. And time for you with the phone call or a text, 402-413-2400. We've talked a lot about Nash Hutmaker and the job he's done on the wrestling mat for Mark Manning. And by the way, the wrestlers were dominant yesterday taking care of Illinois at the Devaney Center. They've got their senior night Friday. It's crazy. I feel like we just started wrestling season. Didn't they just have like their second home meet like a week ago? More than that, I guess. But uh, Yeah, they haven't really been as home as much, I guess, at home as much this, this season. But we are what, three weeks, two weeks away from Big Tens. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Because... Well, when I talked, no Big Ten track is in two weeks, I think. When I talked to Lenny, it was like only four wow. four duels left before the Big Ten. Crazy. So Nash certainly making an impact. He won again at the heavyweight division. How about the the track meet? The Frank Savine invite over the weekend. Jalen Lloyd, Jamar, Jeremiah Charles both competed uh, in the triple jump. Charles got second, 49 nice. feet, 11 and a quarter. Lloyd finished sixth. Bryce Turner, Malachi Coleman did not compete, but they are working out with the track team, and we may see them yet before the indoor season is over. I love that. I love the fact that those guys are doing some other sports. Yeah, it's it's awesome, and it's um, you know for some of those guys, it's both they they love both sports equally, especially a guy like Jalen Lloyd and um, Bryce Turner. That it's hard. You know, you're talking about two guys that potentially could be all-American type status on the track yep. and could be significant contributors and potentially even maybe even talking maybe Olympics um, with the way that 
their potential could be in the ceiling that they have and, and as they continue to grow in the sport. And so great that they get that opportunity. I just, you know, I just remember going back to when Bryce Turner committed and, and talking to his family just how much that meant to, to be able to do both because there's every school in the country wanted him for track. And, you know, he just got elite, elite speed. And, and Brenton Emanuel said potentially a lot of those guys could be a big time part of some relay teams moving forward. So I think uh, probably just easing them into it a little bit, seeing where they fit and, and how they fit. And I wouldn't be surprised if you see them more and more in the lineup. I get the feeling Matt Rule likes his guys to do something that's competitive. And so it doesn't buy, I mean, I think he, I don't know, he totally encourages it, but he doesn't not encourage it for Nash to go wrestle or these guys to go compete in track because it's they're competing they're putting themselves on the line being judged I think he likes that challenge well and and he thinks that there are certain things certain aspects of the sports that are helping his athletes and not to mention the communication is there between the coaching staffs both with track and field and then with the wrestling staff just communicating when Nash has needed certain places, how they need to approach certain things, because I know Nash is still working out and lifting some of the mm -hmm. football team. And so just, uh, again, making sure that they're doing what they need to do and, and having the type of training that they need for their football, but then also that also works for track and field. But you know, th that communication is there. And when you start talking about recruits that want to maybe potentially be two sport athletes, it's a, a great example of, hey, this is how it can be done. And I think... They're uh, doing a great job of that. I, I know that, again, when it's talking with the track team and then even with, with Coach Manning, this, the communication was so great that they didn't feel like it would be a problem at all for, for them to balance because there are some things that they have to do in the spring still, despite competing for other teams, but balance making sure that they're doing some of the things that they need to do with football, but then also taking care of the things that they need to take care of for the track and wrestling teams. Coaches at this level in a lot of sports really like to see athletes compete in other things and we live kind of in an era where prep sports you're encouraged to pick and dedicate yourself to one thing whether it's basketball or volleyball or soccer or whatever but i think a lot of college coaches go no we like to see kids do other things they work other muscles in different sports in track or track compared to football or wrestling compared to football or basketball compared to volleyball that you you're working and developing different muscles but boy, don't kid yourself. We live in an era where a lot of people in 10, 10 to 15, they say, you got to pick your sport and stick with it, and that's all you can do. That conversation I had with Alexis Markowski a couple weeks ago, she was adamant about how important volleyball has been to her being able to be the best rebounder in the Big Ten, one of the best rebounders in the country because of the timing, because she, she can even, if she doesn't get two hands on the ball, she can tip it a lot of times to teammates. Just a lot of the things that skills that she developed in the volleyball court have helped her become an elite rebounder and you know i actually had asked her about that because it was the assistant coaches julian nasibe was in and he he actually went back to that he's like it's that volleyball background a lot of the things that you see that kind of separate her are some of the things that she learned on the volleyball court and then alexis you know um echoed that and said absolutely that a lot of the things that i learned with you know jumping in um all the things that were critical for her to be good on the volleyball court have they translate it to the basketball court and, and vice versa. So, yeah, I think there's a, a lot of athletes here that will say that they would not be the athlete that they were today had it not been playing in multiple sports growing up. We're, we're big advocates of that, and I, I think most, most coaches here are. I know, and yet a lot of youth coaches are trying to convince parents and kids, you got to pick at age 12. You better decide. You're going to put all your efforts and training into that, and I've never been a, a proponent of that. Ethan Piper was making kind of the uh, media tour. He got interviewed. It was a good piece in the Omaha World Herald. A couple of the fan sites have also done pieces on Ethan. He is officially done. Uh, we mentioned a few weeks ago that he had been taken off the, the roster on Huskers.com. He, he, he had some wonderful, totally Ethan Piper type quotes, Jessica, about it. It pains him that he never helped take a team to a bowl game. It's his regret that he wasn't able to help that. Uh, I'm going to miss Ethan. I know he's going to be a success in whatever he does. If he's going to teach or coach or whatever he's going to do, he's going to be a, a big success. But good article. Great young man. I know he was one of your favorite guys to chat with. Oh, he was. Just, I mean, even going back to the road race, and he, there was a special relationship there with uh, one of the young kids that, that participated. And But, yeah, he, he, you want to talk about the epitome of a student athlete and the things that he did off the field, and we might not ever know the impact that he had because – while a lot of it 
well, a good portion of it is highlighted and maybe documented. There is a great portion that's not. And he he started that. I go back to the the. I guess it was the program that he started about writing pen pals to kids whose parents are deployed and just that to have that kind of interaction and he signed up it was his idea and he you know the life skills got de uh, department got behind him and he got other student athletes that were involved from all across that athletics department that were writing pen pals and it just uh, you know just all the things that he's done but I, he's going to be a real he'll be a really fun teacher oh my classroom. gosh sign you know, me up it, right how many kids are going to want to be uh mr piper um they're going to want to be taught by mr piper he, he had a funny line, I think I told this story, he, that he got honored with the Husker Senior Award winners at the Outland Trophy Dinner, and he got up in that. He had just finished day one of student teaching at Lincoln North Star High School, and he made the guy go, how, how were the kids to deal with? He goes, oh, they were just getting back from break, and they were chatting, and, you know, know kids coming off Christmas break, and he goes, I had to, I had to go pull up some inner Donovan Riola talks <laughs> to get them, get them back on beam, and I go, that's hilarious. <laughs> Channel some Dylan, Donovan Riola That's speeches hilarious. from his time in the, the meeting rooms with him. All right, 402-413-2400, the number to be a part of the program tonight. When we come back, we're going to hear from Donovan Jones. He signed with the Oscars back in December. Two days from now is another signing day. Nebraska expected to sign five to seven more football players for this program. But we're going to hear from the Omaha North product, Donovan Jones. We'll have that for you coming up next. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyset Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, Mom. Yeah, I got in a crash. I'm okay. I was wearing my seatbelt. People count on you to buckle up. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions. Cow chip throwing. Or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. 
Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. That's the best way I could describe how it felt for me when I would walk out of either the casino or the keno parlor, is that you just felt that wave of heat, that wave of oppression kind of hit you, that wave of dread. Mike is a former problem gambler. Right away, you would always know that that drive home would be the worst moments of why. Why did I do this again? Why can't I stop this? Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at Life After Bet. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest Premier, John Deere Dieter, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you. We've got a National Signing Day, part two, coming up on a Wednesday. Huskers will have a few names that they will announce. Matt Rural will have a press conference on Wednesday as well. To just talk a lot of things. I mean, there's been changes on the staff. Glenn Thomas now the new quarterbacks coach, co-offensive coordinator. We've not heard Coach World talk about Coach Thomas. We've not heard him talk about some of the changes that have happened in the Big Ten conferences. There's a lot that's taken place since Coach's last press conference on December the 20th, last time he met with the media. So a lot to cover. That'll be Wednesday. We'll play you the highlights for you on Wednesday night's show. One of the young men who inked with the Oscars back in December is Donovan Jones from Omaha North High School. Uh, prior to that signing day, Jessica had a chance to sit down with Donovan. Well, we welcome in Donovan Jones of Omaha North. Donovan, congratulations. Uh, signing day is finally here. Uh, I know it can be a little bit of a, a stressful, long process, but how does it feel to officially be a Husker? It feels great just knowing that like I'm officially like done with everything and just keep in touch with my team, my new teammates that I've just committed and all the new coaches. Just a great time. Well, take me through your decision process. You committed back in the summer. You went to camp here. Just walk me through that. Why you felt like this was the right spot for you? Just uh, like after I went on my official visit, like a week after I got the offer, just like that really like got me like locked in to the school. I just loved meeting like how the coaches like just got to talk with you. Like we had solo, we had solo meetings and things like that. And just the environment, it's like 45 minutes from home. Just, it's a just great place. So you came to Friday Night Lights camp, right? Tell me about that performance and, and what, what was your approach to it and uh, what you kind of wanted to show you could do when you came to that camp. Well, yeah, that camp was my last camp, so I just, like, I wanted to ball out there, obviously, so I could get an offer, and I ended up getting a Wyoming offer and the Nebraska offer. And if I, like, just, like, it was just kind of, like, a last hope thing, because if I didn't, like, do good at any, if I didn't do good at the camp, I was going to commit to another school. So I'm just blessed that I performed well and showed out for the coaches. That's awesome. What does that mean to you that you can have that opportunity to earn a spot at a camp, that this coaching staff does put value in that? Uh, it's just, I mean, it's just great. Like, you, you know, like, if you show out in a camp, like some camps you go to, you don't know if you're going to get, like, looked at by the real coaches, like, if they're just there, like, for looking at certain people and uh, things like that. So I'm glad Coach Rule and Coach Cooper we're there to watch and see what I can really do. So tell us about Coach Cooper, Evan Cooper, and, and what it's been like getting to know him and build that relationship with him. 
It's a. Uh, it's great. Like he's a really cool dude. He coaches both the corners and the safeties. I'll most likely be a safety, and uh, he's just real fun. He's like an easy person to talk to, and he knows a lot about football. So when you announced your commitment to Nebraska, you gave a special shout out to your parents. You said especially my parents for never giving up on me. What what role did they play in your progress as a football player, and and to be able to have this opportunity here today? Uh, like everything, like since since I was a little kid, my dad played football at USD, and he just wanted like me and my brother to be great at everything we do. So we put a lot of work in into football because that was our favorite sport, and just like love them both. My mom showed up to everything, so that's great. So I, I've read a few articles on you, and we've, we've seen your film. You obviously are not afraid to be physical, right, uh, as a defensive back back there. Where does that come from? Why do you like the physicality of it? Uh, just, like, I've been playing, like, DB my whole life, and I just, like, progressively, like, once you just get used to, like, hitting, you can, like, the game just gets slower, and you just start moving faster. And just like take on collisions and it don't feel like nothing. So, how exciting was it for you to watch what the the Nebraska defense did last season and to be able to come be a part of that? Uh, you know, just the way that they were able to really show out every single week. How exciting is that for a young defensive player coming in to join it? It was it was great to see. Like their defense took a big jump, and I'm glad they ended up giving Tony White, that uh, Coach White, that that paycheck and. It's going to be a great season coming on. You know, one of the things that this staff said last year, a year ago on signing day, is that they were going to keep the, the local talent here in Nebraska. You're one of those guys. You're one of those guys. How, how special is that, that they do put a lot of value in the players and the talent in this state of Nebraska? Uh, that's just, it's amazing. Like, because it, it's just, it got better. It's been getting better throughout the years. So I'm just glad they find, they took a look at me, checked out my film, and made the move. How special is it going to be for you to get to wear that, that in on your helmet? It's going to be real special. I wanted to play, uh, especially Power 5 football, my whole life. And I just, just got to take it in and go to work. You know, you talked about potentially not having as many opportunities and... To, for every high school kid, this is their dream. So what does it mean to you to get to have this opportunity with Nebraska? Just, like, blessed. Like, only 1% of kids go end up going Power 5 or Division 1 anyways. And that's just, you just got to gotta be humble and take it all in because not everybody gets that chance. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you're going to play uh, basketball for Omaha North. You're going to run track. Uh, but what goes into these next few months for you before you um, come to campus in, in May or June? Just uh, continuing lifting and doing DB workouts and just running. With the school, I do DB workouts at uh, Warren Academy to just keep me in shape and know what I'm doing all the time. It's awesome. You know, when, when you committed and you had that offer, how much did that help you kind of relax, maybe be able to really ball out and have a great senior year? It was, it was huge. And committing in the summer, getting everything off your chest just makes you only think about your high school and just, like, helping them get as far as we can in the playoffs. Very cool. All right, I just got a few more fun questions for you. Let Husker fans get to know you a little bit. Who was your favorite player or athlete, any sport, growing up? I would say uh, my favorite player was always Aaron Rodgers for quarterback. But one of my, like, favorite athletes was I like Alvin Kamara a lot for football-wise. That's awesome. Who, what's your favorite hobby outside of football? I would just say... Uh, I like uh, fishing, camping, and just like hanging out with friends a lot. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. Favorite cereal? S I would say uh, kind of matters the day, but Cinnamon Toast Crunch or like Lucky Charms. You a big cereal guy? Uh, yeah, I would say so. All right. What's your Spotify wrapped look like? Who's your number one artist? I really don't listen to music like that. Really? I, in all seriousness, I listen to music on game days, 
But like when just walking around for fun, I don't listen to music. Okay, interesting. All right, last one for you. Probably the toughest. So I've got four yeah. choices of cookies. I want you to rank them, fourth being last, one being best. So you got chocolate chip, peanut butter, macadamia nut, and oatmeal raisin. I would go chocolate chip first. Uh, what was the second one? Peanut butter. Peanut butter. I would do uh, oatmeal raisin second. Uh, mm, actually, oatmeal second. Oatmeal third. Peanut butter, or actually macadamia nut second. Peanut butter last. Okay, I like it. I like it. I like white chocolate chips. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, appreciate your time. Congratulations again, and, and we'll look forward to seeing you here on campus come this summer. All right, thank you. <laughs> those have been so fun. Uh, so fun to get to know those guys, but uh, another local local talent that's coming here and that uh, means a little, a little some extra. But also what I've found fascinating, too, are just some of the, the guys that came to the camps that are in the offers after camps, and we're seeing just how important that's going to be for recruiting moving forward. When we're sitting here in June and we're talking about, oh, they're having a Friday night's camp in the stadium while we're doing a show, that's where they're finding guys. They're mm -hmm. finding talent at those type of things. Was that the first cinnamon toast crunch you got? I think it was. I do, too. I don't remember that answer coming out anywhere. What was the po popular Fruity Pebbles? Wasn't that? That's big. Wasn't that the number one? Oh, yeah, by far. And it's. Not, I've checked in the training table. It is not there. Uh-oh. They, they, do, they, they better add that. And he had macadamia nut as high as probably any kid's had. I think someone had it one that I think about, okay. but I'm not sure who. A lot of them had ties to certain cookies that if they had a relative or family member that made special cookies, so... Cole, I hope this talk about food and cookies isn't tough on your tummy. <laughs> Cole's been buying a little bout of that all weekend long, so I think he's okay, though. Hey, Woodhouse Auto Family, they are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. 402-413-2400, the number if you want to be a part of the program tonight. We'd love to talk to you. Got a couple texts we're going to talk about in the next segment. And we're going to hear Jessica was at Softball Fan Day, their first ever on Saturday. Got to talk to some young fans of Husker Softball. We'll have that for you next. Woodhouse has got you covered for your next car, truck, or SUV. We are committed to making the car buying and owning experience better thanks to our knowledgeable sales staff and factory certified technicians. You can discover our large inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles anytime at Woodhouse.com, where we have made buying a car easier than ever. Whether you need a family hauling SUV, a car to take you around town, or a hardworking truck, Woodhouse has something for everyone. This statement is not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. When it comes to my lifestyle and diet, I don't always make the smartest choices. Touchdown! Woo! Hey, how about another round and some more chips? But when it comes to taking care of my liver, I do make one very smart choice. Active liver tablets from New Nordic. I used to have real issues with my liver. And at my last checkup, my doc was concerned about my numbers. But since adding a once-a-day active liver tablet, my gut's better, I feel great, and my doctor's happy. I ask a lot of my liver, so the least I can do to say thanks is a daily dose of active liver. Active liver is one of many award-winning health products from New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Scandinavia. Purchase at Amazon.com or for a volume discount, visit NewNordicUSA.com. Available as a tablet or delicious sugar-free gummy. Protect and help your liver the easy and effective way with active liver at Amazon or NewNordicUSA.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! 
stories. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks. Foundation Solutions, crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you, too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families, a legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F-Series America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of Built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. There's no community like a Cenex community, and that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night. Art in Los Angeles on our text line said, Greg, time flies. Baseball starts soon. Can you talk about baseball, when and where their first games are going to be played? Any games out in my area? Unfortunately, we're not getting the California Art. Uh, They'll open at Globe Life. The home of the Texas Rangers, they'll play three Big 12 teams weekend one. We do go to Phoenix, which I guess is kind of close to ER. We'll play Grand Canyon. Then we're going to the other coast, College of Charleston, that third weekend to play them in a four-game series and then back home for March. Yeah, Andy on the chat the other day said, uh, how is your prep going being? There's a lot of new faces, 26 right? new players out wow. of 40. And how many of those will be in the lineup? Um... Well, of the pitching, yeah, a good chunk of the pitchers will be new. Uh, some of the lineup, you'll recognize names, but there'll be a handful of new ones there. We had to sit down today with the coaches to talk about guys and what, who throws what and all those type of things. So a lot of names to learn, a lot of different faces. I don't know. I have no idea how this season is going to go. We'll find out. What would you say going into it probably is a strength? I think they're going to be better offensively than people think, even with Luz and Bryce and Max, wow. who are so good. I think they have enough guys that can do some things. I think they have more depth in the pitching. The weakness is, do they have true starters? Don't know. They have to figure that out as they make their way through. Let's go to, back to the phones. West Point, Husker, Dan, I know you like those ball bat sports. Oh, my goodness, yes. I'm, so, I'm, I'm just thrilled. You know, Greg and Jessica, how, how are you tonight? And... Uh, good to be back on the phone with you guys. You know, with football and, and football done, most people get depressed and it's like, oh, God, you know, just we got to wait till football starts up again. But, oh, no, not not for most Oscar fans. We we got so much going on. We got, you know, we got to get excited and keep listening to the, the baseball, the basketball, the softball, the wrestling, all that's going on right now. And, and we're excelling. And, and, and you know, it just – and before, just before you know it, you know, football is going to be right around the corner again. And so it just keeps 
it, you know, it's just a domino effect. It's like we're so good and everything now. It's just it's so awesome. What do you guys think? Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, I just spoke at a Husker women's event uh, last week that I was pulling some of the kind of the statistics and we've got two top 10 teams right now in the nation, Husker Bowling and Husker Rifle. We got top 25 teams uh, that are going to be that are should be top 25 teams, both in track and field and women's gymnastics. Uh, basketball, women's basketball at the time was ranked in the top 30, but they are still certainly on pace to make the NCAA tournament. Softball is coming in, ranked basically top 15 in the preseason. And then a, a lot of individuals that are just uh, could really do some big things in their individual sports too. But you had the soccer had the great season, volleyball, but it's carrying over certainly with the women's sports. But th well, those teams right there are certainly uh, ones to watch for and excited about here in the spring and and closing out the winter sports men's gym and wrestling both top five yeah absolutely right? and men's track is what jake top 10 nine right nine think, nine. nine so you know and then fred hoiberg's basketball team dan they're they're clicking it's fun to watch that group yeah so there's a yeah, lot of teams to follow here and i know i left a lot jessica thanks you i left a lot of a lot of sports out but you covered me so thank you <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's uh, that's what I was just had pulled up my when you when you started talking about that just my women's sports and uh, certainly uh, golf golf as well. Golf? Kelly golf Ann Strand off. just had a great weekend yeah. too in their opening weekend, and so there's um oh yeah. yeah lots to lots to be excited about and follow here in the spring. All right, Dan. Good to hear from you. Thanks for calling, Dan. Yeah. Appreciate the phone call from up in West Point. John in Omaha says, I'm very excited. I got my Husker softball season tickets. Uh, I can't wait. Pumped for that. Their home opener, I think, is March 1st, which isn't all that far away with uh, February being a little bit shorter month. They open their season in three days in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. They'll play Washington Thursday night. We're going to do some listen-ins during Sports Nightly on Thursday night. Depending on when they, they're supposed to start at 630, but they're on a tournament field. Sometimes those can get pushed one way or the other, but we'll try to catch a little bit of Nate Rohr calling some softball on a Thursday night. Softball did have their first ever fan fest on Saturday and Jessica attended and we thought we'd play a little snippet of her talking to some young Husker fans who had a chance to come out and meet the softball team. We're here at the Hawks Championship Center for the first ever Nebraska Softball Fan Day. Hundreds of fans of all ages are here to meet the 2024 squad. Let's go check it out and see how this Nebraska softball team is inspiring the next generation of Huskers. It's packed. Come on, let's go. Hey, girls, will you all do an interview with us? Yeah, sure. What made you want to come out here today? For um, her birthday. What you want to do for your birthday? Yeah. Why did you want to do this for your birthday? Um, softball is a big part of my life, and I kind of wanted to play for this team when I get older. Oh, that's so how has the birthday been so far? Really good. Why did you want to bring the kids out today? Um, our girls really love softball. My husband coaches them, so we figured we'd show them what they could do when they get older. Hey, girls, y'all want to do an interview with us? Yeah? OK. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to school and tell my best friend Haley that I saw Jordy Ball. What do you love about this team? Um, like their teamwork and their friendship. They're all so confident. What does this mean to you to see this kind of turnout? To see these little girls coming, wanting to talk to you? It's amazing just to hear from them because I know I was that little girl like back when I was young, and so it's cool to chat with them and learn about their lives so that we can get kind of connected. There's been lots of Avas too. I'm like, name twin! <laughs> Why did you want to come out here? Uh, because I want to be just like Jordy. Um, they inspire you a lot. Just like make me want to be a better player and keep working for it. Why do you like Husker softball? Um, probably because I love softball. Yeah, why do you like softball? Because you get to hit and pitch. I love that. Why did you want to bring the girls out today? Um, I think it's important to show positive female role models um, that, that do something that they love to do. How much do they inspire you guys? Just seeing what, you know, you're from Nebraska, there's a lot of Nebraska players to see what you could possibly do. They really inspire us. And I know for me, like, I will, I'll watch a lot of their games. I'll come to a lot of their games. So, yeah. Abby. Man, what does this mean to you to see this kind of turnout? It is so cool. Oh, my gosh. Just the growth from my freshman year to now, getting to see just the community rally behind us and just how many 
girls that are here that want to be Huskers someday, it's incredible. Are they fun to watch? Yeah. Nice? Uh-huh. Yeah? And they play really good softball, and they practice hard for good um, sportsmanship, too. You can tell when you, like, their, their chants, they do it really good together. They're always talking to, with each other. They're really nice to each other, and that just shows, like, how much being kind and, like, helping others can really improve your team. When teams get along, I feel like they can just do more t together and like hit better and it motivates them. Go Big Red! Go Big Red! Go Big Red! Go Big Red! Nebraska softball opens up the 2024 season coming up on Thursday against Washington in the Puerto Vallarta Challenge. If you can't tell by this scene, I think it's safe to say that Husker Nation is excited for Nebraska softball this season. Go Big Red. Oh, so fun. Such an awesome event. I mean, Greg, I pulled up to the, to the Hawks Championship Center about 20 minutes before the gates opened, and it was raining, and the line that was just out the door, down the sidewalk, they had so many people, a lot more than they expected. And as you know, again, we, we did several interviews and those were edited up and, and, and clipped up. But as much as you think, oh, everybody's going to say Jordy there is their favorite player, there were several kids that said different players. You know, nice. that, yeah. So it's, it's certainly a, a team that, yes, Jordy Ball has certainly elevated the exposure of, but there's a lot of fans that have been following this team that like a lot of the players on this team, and they had a really cool event. Uh, Coach Ravel called all the kids to, to come up close, and, and they had a, a cool program. It was, it was so well done. And it, again, shout out to Husker Nation for showing up. But I think it's going to be a fun, this going to be a fun team to watch for sure. No doubt. Starts Thursday night uh, down in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. They'll play four games this weekend, and then they're into New Mexico next weekend for a handful of games. DJ from down in Kansas wants to know, uh, do we have any idea if Blaze can get a hardship for being injured and what happened to the point guard that sounded promising? This is uh, Ty from down in Kansas asking this. Blaze has been a I puzzle. I think that was thank you. T.Y. for thank you? Probably. Yeah, you're probably right. Because it's, it's in the text line. is DJ. Yeah. Uh, it's been a puzzle <laughs> on Blaze because there's some games that he's been listed as available and dressed and then the next night he'll be like in sweats and not ready to play. I, I think he's just not quite back healthy enough to go play. I got to imagine he could get a hardship, right? He hasn't stepped on the floor. Yeah, they, um, you know, I've, I've asked about that a, a couple times. I just, I think he was out for so long. They're just progressing along so slowly. I know that he has been out on the court for some, um, some team drills, but he has not been full go in practices, and they will not play until you're, you're full go in practice. So I think they just, it's just been a slow go at getting him back. And then Aaron Eulis, I believe, is, is probably what Or as you mentioned, about. a boogie. Um, I don't know. It, it, Aaron is still not eligible because of NCAA things from his time at Iowa. Boogie is, has been actually hurt right now, but Boogie, I think, had some turnover issues earlier in the season, and I think Nebraska kind of found their rotation. Boogie is... I think was getting close to starting to maybe play a little bit more, and then he got nicked up last week in one of their practices. But, I, and and Boogie's still probably not quite a true point guard. I mean, he's a little bit more of a, a combo guard. He can handle the ball and has in the past. But I think the true point guard was certainly Aaron Eulis, who is still not ineligible. But I do think that they are waiting, and he could be eligible at, at any point yeah. potentially. But I think they're also feel like. They got their point guard for next year. I think they'll feel, they feel like it'll all get solved with Aaron's problems. They said he's been a great teammate, fantastic in practice for them, running the scout team. Uh, so they really like Aaron a lot. So hopefully it gets all that NCAA stuff gets cleared up and he's there next year. But I think, you know, for some of these guys that are waiting on this ruling, you, you don't get to sit. This can't be a redshirt year, right? I don't because think so. Because it's, like, it's a it's, suspension. It's a suspension. Yeah. So if at any point he's available, I think he will play. But I don't know. I think this takes away a year of eligibility at this point. Like this year is is burned. I don't know. But that he, he has. I think he's got another year. I don't know that he had a red shirt at Iowa though. So this could effectively be a red shirt but, but year. But can right? it be though if you're sitting out due to NCAA? That's a good question. I don't know. Uh, I would think you have five years to play for it. This just takes a whole year away. You couldn't red shirt later. I'm going to check. His, I'm going to look that up in the break, see where he is on his Because sometimes clock. it's like you, you lose that year, you know, of the eligibility. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know what the 
what the official ruling is with that, um, with the punishment, but... They like him. Yeah. They and, like I, him. and I think he would certainly help, and, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that unfolds. Folks, Woodhouse Auto Family, they're your trusted auto partner with 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. 402-413-2400. We're back with everybody's weekend winners. We'll do that next. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F Series trucks to help grow businesses, communities, families. A legacy of capability and technology that's made Ford F Series America's best selling trucks 47 years straight. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. Now, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F 150 only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Husker fans, if you're looking for a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding and provides flexibility, your local insurance agency is hiring. No matter your skills or interests, there are opportunities for you in the insurance industry. Explore the many ways you can use your skills to protect your community by checking out the IIAN job board. Find your calling and be a part of an industry that makes a difference. Go to IIAN.org slash careers today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. I just remember leaving that day feeling absolutely exhausted. I was sick and tired of living that double life. Mike is a former problem gambler. The anxiety, the depression is real. You start thinking about the money, where that could have went to. It's never enough. I could win $10 million today, and I'd go back and try to win 20 tomorrow. Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at Life After Bet. Dot com. Folks, you could win a 2024 Porsche Macon from Porsche of Omaha if you could make a full court putt at halftime of a men's basketball game. If you want to get yourself registered, learn about the rules, go to Oscars.com slash putt. Learn something every day. T-Wise, thank you. <laughs> Keep it up with I'm the I'm assuming that's what that meant. That's what <laughs> my mom doesn't say thank you. She a lot of times will T -Y. say T-Wise. Yeah. So... That's what I took it as. Yeah. My uh, mother-in-law, she's always, her texts are always very cryptic. Headed to W, be home later. Is that Walmart? That's Walmart. Okay. So, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> learn, learn to speak Karen. <laughs> Time for winners. Let's let, did you meet the new guy, Jake? Jake. Jake, let's let Jake I, Well, go. I know I hadn't seen him. I said Happy New Year when I walked <laughs> let's in Let's let today. Jake go first. Give me a winner. Yeah, so, uh. Me and Cole back here, we were, we were doing a little bit of rock, paper, scissors because we had the same idea. He ended up taking it two out of three. Uh, so I'm changing up my winner. I'm going to the Nebraska club hockey team. They hadn't won a game Whoa. since November 12th of 2023. They pick up a 2-0 uh, win in the series against Creighton, 5-0 and 9-3 this past weekend. Big ups to them. Sweet. They, uh, they skate over at the Breslau, don't they? Isn't that where they practice? I think the Breslau Center. Really nice. Do. Good for them. Good one. That's that's off the radar. Well done, Cole. You got Tim is 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 uh, has Tim hit you up to cover some hockey? Our old producer was a big hockey. He guy. loved hockey. Yeah. All right, Cole. My winner goes to USC women's basketball in uh, Juju, Juju Watkins. Juju. Fifty-one of the sixty-seven points USC had in their win. Over She's Stanford. amazing. 
She's amazing. And a lot of people don't get to see her play. They play on those West Coast late night time time zones. Pac-12 Network. Pac-12 yeah. Network. Nobody gets. So she's really... We'll see her next year. Oh, yeah. Big 12 or Big 10, here they come. They're, she's really, really good. Yeah. There's going to be lots of talent. In sure is. All right. This league. You think, do you think Caitlin comes back? I, I think she will. I really do. Because she has the COVID year, as we were kind of talking during the break. She could come back for that fifth year. I think she will, but just because I think she loves Iowa. And, you know, I think she'll, she'll make money either way just because of the NIL and the branding. And there's more money probably. Uh, or she, it's not like the money for the WNBA is going to be significant enough, like, a, a, like an NBA first-round draft. To pull her away. But, you yeah. know, she loves Iowa and loves playing college basketball. So I, I think she'll come back one more year. Yeah. I'm I'm going to give it up just going back to what we were just talking about, but the first ever Husker softball fan day and the way that fans showed up, it was unbelievable. I know that, you know, you you have heard about the season tickets and, and the waiting list and expanding the stadium, but to see how the Husker fans showed out on Saturday and it really meant a lot to the softball team and it's going to be fun to watch them, but they are such great people. And you under if you know them a little bit, if you got to know them, which... It was cool how they did a breakout session. So, you know, they, they didn't just do the autograph line. They, they all kind of mingled with some of the young young girls that were there and, and got to get to really know them and really chat with them. But if, if you know this team, you know how great people they are. You want to be around them. You want to root for them. And so I just I think it was just overall uh, kudos to the marketing department and the softball team and then all the fans that showed up. It just was was really great, certainly for the first ever. The marketing team worked hard because they had the baseball fan fest Friday yeah. night and then softball turned around and had to put on the softball event on Saturday. So uh, good stuff. All right. My winner and you guys are not going to even know who this is. Emily Sisson is my winner. Emily Sisson grew up in Omaha, went to Marion and then Millard North High School. She is the United States marathon record holder. The marathon Olympic trials were this weekend in Orlando. She finished second, so she qualified for the Olympics. She's headed to Paris this summer as part of Team USA, so congratulations to Emily Sisson. She doesn't live in Omaha anymore, but she grew up in Omaha and went to two high schools up in Omaha. How cool is that? Wow, how fast did she ride? She ran, uh, well, the winning time was 2 hours, 25 minutes, 38 seconds. Uh, or 2 hours, 22 minutes, 10 seconds was the winning time. They don't list hers. They just said she finished second. And then the third place winner uh, was a gal by the name of Dagota Lindworm. So th those are the three marathoners that will compete for Team USA in Paris. But Emily Sisson, Omaha native. Headed to the Olympics. Congratulations. We're going to keep hearing that news from here till the summer. Uh, every however often that those events are being held to, for Olympians to qualify. And I think we're going to be hearing a lot of ties. I do too. To Nebraska. Yeah, I think there'll be a handful of one. You know, Jordan Larson certainly has her spot on Team USA for volleyball like she did four years ago. So uh, she certainly will be or three years ago because it was COVID. They had to push yeah. her to 21. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of the players, I remember Stayed. talking to her and she was done but then i think because it was a quicker turnaround they go almost a yeah so i think a lot of those athletes that might have been done after 2020 said okay i can i can make it three more years yeah. it'll be fun oh, the gymnastics is always amazing and we got some people competing for the huskers gymnastics team that have a chance to, to men and women shange bakshway has already yep. qualified and i think taylor christopoulos certainly has a chance to sure be does with the men. and certainly track and field athletes as oh, uh, we yeah. had coach There's last week lots of those. he said there were some that competed at the frank savine that'll be olympians coming up as well. All right, tomorrow night, no show. Husker women's basketball, big one for them. They need to try to get it back on the winning track. They're at Michigan tomorrow night. They beat the Wolverines a few weeks ago here in Lincoln. We're back with a one-hour show for you on Wednesday night. Matt Rural will have a press conference that day. Jessica will be at a girls and women's sports day over at the Hawks Championship Center, reporting in from over there. So we'll have a big hour before we hand it off to Kent and Jake for the Husker men as they take on Northwestern. Full two-hour shows then on Thursday and Friday. Thanks to Jake and Nicole and to all of you for listening. Talk to you again tomorrow night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions. <laughs> Cow chip throwing. Or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. 
Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at CenexHometownThrowdown.com. Cenex, powered locally. Start your next journey with Woodhouse. Our commitment extends beyond just selling cars. We offer an unparalleled car buying experience that allows you to shop and buy all online. Explore an array of new brands, makes, and models, as well as our large selection of pre-owned vehicles. And it's easy to get started today with our streamlined purchasing process online, granting you the freedom to secure your next vehicle anytime, anywhere. Discover a better way to buy with Woodhouse. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Did I forget something? No, just wanted to tell you I love you. Oh, don't forget to buckle up. Drive safe. I will. Love you too. Someone is counting.